What's going on everyone, it's Justin here. And if you've been watching the channel for the past few years, you guys know that we've been covering a ton of Opal products and these campaigns have brought us around the world. Being able to check out all these beautiful destinations with their brand new smartphones and cutting edge technology that they've planned to show off, as well as seeing the innovation and differences that move along with the trends of the smartphone industry has been really exciting for us. So today we're gonna to be talking about Oppo's innovation at a consumer level, but also through their innovation accelerator program that we talked about a few months ago, highlighting some of the winners and the innovations that they've come up with for digital health and accessibility to hopefully apply into future technologies and products through their hardware and software. If you guys look to win an Oppo Find and foldable smartphone, which is one of their biggest innovations this year, just go ahead and drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and also click the link down below to check out the winners from the Oppo Innovation Accelerator program. And let me know down in the comment section below what your favorite innovation is, and also leave your Instagram username because we'll be contacting the winner in one month. We're gonna link all the other videos that we made with Oppo, including the travel films in the past, and I wanna give a huge thanks to them for sponsoring this video. So let's go ahead and go down memory lane down Oppo's innovation list and what we've personally checked out over the years. So one of the first phones that I checked out from Oppo was the world's thinnest smartphone. At the time, there was an incredible feat of engineering and what's impressive is that smartphones nowadays have actually gone back to a thicker form factor. So looking all the way back, it was incredible that they were able to make a device that thin. I remember it had beautiful chamfered edges, the hardware was great considering its size, and in general, it was just cool as someone who is relatively new to tech to see a tech product that was different from everything else. From then, I also checked out an Oppo smartphone that had the flippable camera that utilized the rear-facing main camera that produced the highest quality on the smartphone as the front-facing camera as well. So being able to rotate that and have that dual use is something that I was actually pretty surprised that not many smartphone companies ever tried out. I know we've moved over to smartphones that have like smaller bezels around the front and integrated cameras nowadays, but that was another piece of tech that I thought was so cool and eventually that also evolved into hinging front-facing cameras that actually popped out from the top, which was a really good idea to have a full display with no hole or bezel on it. But one issue that I did notice was that I couldn't really tell which way the phone was when it was just sitting on a table, whether it was the top or bottom. There's also been some really fun limited edition phones, including their partnership with Lamborghini, building some of the most beautiful phones that I've ever seen. And I always love it when a phone company partners with an automobile company because I personally love cars and these Lamborghini phones were just as overkill as you could imagine. It was carbon fiber that was blended in, huge batteries, incredible specs with tons of RAM and just the highest end of everything in the most beautiful packaging possible. But over the past few years, some of the biggest highlights that we have from Oppo's innovation and smartphone releases include their travel. So we actually attended their event back in Milan in 2019, I believe, for the launch of the R17 line of smartphones. The focus of it was to take low light images on their new phone and Milan was the beautiful city to be able to do that with all of the architecture. This was really the birth of smartphones that utilized algorithms and AI to be able to produce great night images and as it moved on throughout the years with better low light images on smartphones, it is ever important that hardware and software come together. The next film that we did with Oppo was actually in Switzerland for their Zurich launch of the Reno 10X Zoom. This was a smartphone that I loved using because it actually had a periscope lens built in for its zoom camera. The way it works with a periscope lens is that the sensor is actually placed horizontally to the smartphone and there's a 45 degree mirror that reflects the image onto the sensor. So you're able to have the element that is able to capture a 5X image, but at the same time, the phone was still completely flush and in line with the rest of the cameras. It was also able to take photos at a 10X hybrid zoom. And while we're in the Swiss Alps and taking pictures of the beautiful mountains and the countryside, these were some of the most incredible photos that I've captured on the smartphone to date. And once again, I'm kind of surprised that smartphones right now don't all have periscope lenses. And it's something that I'd love to have back because I feel like the zoom lens is often a weak aspect of a lot of the flagship smartphones today. We also did films with Oppo in Japan, but more recently, it brings us to 2022, where we attended Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, which is the first major event after the pandemic. And that is where Oppo made a splash with their Oppo Find X5 Pro smartphone, which is the flagship phone for this year. 
You can see it has that beautiful ceramic back and we got to unbox it a little bit early. And the beautiful thing about ceramic is that it is a very high end material that has a good weight to the smartphone, but incredible levels of durability. And it's something that we previously only saw on certain smartwatches and was usually like a premium option. But beyond that, this is a phone that has flagship specs. It is their highest end smartphone offering. And you can see that all of it is just so beautiful to look at from the front and the side. And it also has camera technology that was the big talk for Oppo this year, the Mars Silicon X NPU. A dedicated imaging chip towards low light images and low light video to be able to maximize the dynamic range, but also process beautiful low light images within a few seconds of taking the photo. And we actually tested this out in a few other destinations as well, including London, attending Wimbledon and being able to utilize the camera on the Oppo Find X5 Pro smartphone before also heading off to Paris to see the release of the Reno 8 phone, which carries a lot of the great features of the flagship X5 Pro, including the Mars Silicon X NPU and main camera into a smartphone that is kind of in the mid high end. A phone that is a little bit more attainable in terms of its price point, but still has a lot of the same design characteristics and all of its best featured transferred over at a lower price. So throughout this partnership on the channel, I'm sure you guys have been able to see the capabilities of the camera technologies, the beautiful hardware, and the great offerings that Oppo has to offer around the world. And we really look forward to producing more films. And the best part about that is that we've really been able to bring that creativity to the channel and show you guys these products in real world scenarios in more of a cinematic travel film, which is what I feel like makes the channel different. But all these things that we're talking about directly attribute to the hardware and the software elements of the smartphone by being able to apply new features and try new things. But Oppo is also working on a lot of cool things in the future that we've also had a sneak preview of as well. Namely the front facing camera that is blended underneath the display that we saw at MWC or there's also the rolling display concept that is able to roll up into different sizes and form factors depending on how you use it. But there's also the Oppo Find N foldable smartphone that is available in China that allows you to just flip it open and use it but when you fold it up it is in a really small form factor and I found that that was one of the most seamless foldable phones that I've checked out to date. Some of the other tech that I'm also really excited about is the fast charging technology with SuperVOOC. They continue to push the limits of fast charging capabilities and we checked out a fast charger in MWC that was able to charge a 5,000 milliamp hour battery in under 10 minutes from zero to 100 by providing over 200 watts of output. This is something that is not available to consumers and their smartphones at the moment, but there's already super fast charging technologies applied to Oppo's flagship line of phones. And thanks to the dual cell battery technology, it is able to charge at a speed that still keeps your device protected in the long run. So Oppo actually just celebrated their 18th birthday and they're looking now into the future of digital health and accessibility. And through that, they've launched their innovation accelerator program as part of Oppo's research institute to be able to further push technology to better the world using their hardware and software capabilities after so much experience in the consumer tech industry. Digital health is something that's been talked about a lot more in general because people are on their smartphones more than ever before. With short form content and all these social media platforms trying to gather your attention, some of the simple elements of digital health that can be applied to hardware and software include the screen on time, the de-stressing app that Oppo has implemented in their smartphone with different white noises and everything. But on top of that, one that I personally use quite often includes the blue light blocking technologies. Looking into the future though, Oppo just announced the winners of their innovative Innovation Accelerator program. So let's talk about some of the highlights from that competition and the ones that I personally think are really exciting. One of the suggested innovations is being able to detect early stages of dementia through eye tracking and the front facing camera. As we know with biometrics, you're able to unlock your smartphone using your face and that is able to look at your eyes, nose and all these small details. It's something that is very common nowadays, but being able to take that to the next level and utilize these biometrics that are detailed and built into algorithms very effectively can be applied to health applications such as dementia. Another one was also a machine vision solution for opticians and people with visual impairments. And as you know, smartphones nowadays in the accessibility settings have the option to make text a little bit larger, for example, but to be able to take that a step further, this once again applies machine learning technologies that smartphones are totally capable of while also using biometric hardware such as the front facing cameras. 
Another proposal also included a diabetes digital therapeutic system that works by providing an artificial pancreas and blood sugar monitoring system based on RTOS on a smartwatch. Health has been a really big focus on smartwatches out there and by being able to read blood oxygen levels and also temperature as well as your heart rate is probably one of the most innovative aspects of technology being able to be applied to wearables. So this is essentially a proposal to take that a step further. And another one of the winners that really looks in the future is a projector that is able to produce an interactive display without needing other medium or screen to be able to do that. So the way I kind of envision that is you see in the movies, there's like a holographic display that is being projected into free space. And you're able to touch different buttons and interact with it. And we've seen early aspects of that technology through consumer products in the past few years, such as invisible keyboards, as well as smartphones implementing projectors through an attachment. But this is really looking into the future where you're able to just have your smartphone in a certain place and have it display a large interactive display that can be used as a utility. But another one of the winning proposals was an early detection system for massive earthquakes. So whether that uses like gyroscopes and algorithms and being able to read trends um, and all that, being able to detect earthquakes early can perhaps allow for people to prepare in fact. There's also proposals that talk about sleep journey optimization by understanding brain waves through EEG hearables. And that is also another aspect of health that I think people are more conscious about than ever before. Getting effective sleep and by wearing different tech products, such as in my case, I have like the Aura Ring, using a smartphone app or a smartwatch or even like a wearable band. These are all very useful pieces of information and there's always more accurate ways to be able to find that data. A wearable that you have on your wrist or your finger is able to give you pretty good objective data. EEG technology takes that a step further by detecting abnormalities in your brain waves, which can obviously be attributed to stages of sleep to a very accurate form beyond just like your heart rate and breathing patterns. So those are just some of the winners from this year's OPPO Research Institute Innovation Accelerator Program. So if you guys wanna go ahead and check out some of the proposals as well as the winners, make sure you go ahead and click that link down below. And it's just really exciting to see in the world of smartphones, which in some areas is more exciting than others, where it's going in the future and how these companies are gonna to continue to innovate using the technology that is available today. Because from a hardware standpoint, I feel like we are light years ahead, but in terms of software optimization, machine learning and artificial intelligence, there's always ways to be able to implement that even better for healthier living and also towards health and daily productivity for everyone who uses their smartphone on a daily basis. These are essentially the most important tools in our lives in the modern era. So it's just really cool to always learn a little bit more about what these companies are working on. As always, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you go ahead and drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next one.